lots of people out there are mad that Hogwarts Legacy has been so successful. Just look at all of the journalists who have written articles complaining about the game, calling us awful names to attempt and deter us from supporting it, and now the Mary Sue has released another article, this time praising a legacy purchase simulator while also attacking our reasoning for playing the game. I have a bunch of things to show off, but before we get into the topic at hand, if you enjoy the content that I create, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and the notification bell. Follow me on social media like Twitter or mine so that you can see when my content is posted, and of course if you do really enjoy the videos and the live streams that I create, please consider becoming a Dark Titan via Patreon or supporting via YouTube memberships. So, as I mentioned, Mary Sue article. Hogwarts Legacy Purchase Simulator skewers the but the developer's argument. Now, there have been many arguments to purchase this title, and if you want to play it, just play it. It is a video game at the end of the day, and if you want to enjoy it, go for it. I personally played it, I live streamed an entire playthrough. And I had a great time with this game. It was fan-freaking-tastic. But unfortunately, there are still individuals like this who are trying to tell you you're an awful person if you enjoy this video game. It says, do you find yourself in a moral quandary torn between not giving your money to T-phobes and anti-Semites or supporting the developers who have already been paid. Now there's a great new tool to help you decide, the Hogwarts Legacy Purchase Simulator. Now you're probably not torn because you either want to play this game or you don't want to play this game. If you don't want to support this title, that's perfectly fine. You are allowed to save your money and put it towards another title that you think deserves it more, but you shouldn't be guilting people who want to spend their hard-earned money on this. I mean, we are all adults here. We can play it if we want. Created by Liana, a 29-year-old trans woman, Hogwarts Legacy Purchase Simulator exists as a satirical tool exposing just how ridiculous the think the developers, uh, it's just a game, bro, and gamers are being persecuted by mean people, takes really are. Whatever your take is on this game, that's fine. If your take is, I want to play it, because I want to support the developers, that's cool. If your take is, it's just a game, bro, that is also cool. Yes, the developers have already been paid for their work, but it does matter if this game sells well or not, because if it doesn't sell well, there's no way it's going to get a sequel, and then a lot of those developers are probably going to get fired. If this game sells well, then yeah, it will get a sequel, a lot of those people will be brought on to that next project. That's just business. That's just how it goes. Yes, your money isn't going directly to those people because they've already been paid, but it does help their future with the company. If that's your reasoning, okay. Uh, it says what happens in Hogwarts Legacy Purchase Simulator. It begins with the Warner Brothers CEO David Zaslav addressing the player, asking them to buy the game because the developers worked really hard and deserve their reward. People have taken this excuse for buying the game in the face of Rowling's bigotry and run with it, despite the fact that the developers are paid an agreed upon amount prior to the game's release. It says that Zaslav is then countered by a woman named Ashley reminding you that the game is directly associated with Rowling. So this was, yes, supposed to be some, like, satirical take on, hey, should you buy this game or should you not? But of course, journalists like this are going to take it and run with it to try to attack us for playing this game. And while this clearly was supposed to be a joke on if you should support this game or not, I don't really find it that funny. Um, all you're doing is giving this game more press. If you hate Hogwarts Legacy with a passion, if you don't want it to be successful, if you don't want people to support it, then don't talk about it. If it had faded into irrelevancy because people hadn't heard of it, you would have been winning. But the thing is that these people talk about it, talk about it, talk about it, and because you're trashing it so badly, you're going to get people who are going to buy a copy simply to say, screw you. They have done the opposite of what they have wanted at this point. I mean, clearly these individuals, the one probably behind this game, this 
Mary Sue writer, they are all extremely salty that this game has done so good. They are mad that this game has sold like hotcakes and everybody's loving it and enjoying it and it's got great user scores. So they're trying still to find a way to guilt people into not playing it, but it's not working. It also says that other familiar figures from the discourse show up, including Hassan, Asmongold, uh, J.K. Rowling herself even. I don't know how these people are going to feel about the fact that their names are being thrown into a game like this. I wonder if any of them will make a statement, but it says depending on whether or not you succumb to the increasingly absurd arguments to buy the game, he eventually challenges you to buy as many copies as you can in 10 seconds, all for the sake of the workers. Meanwhile, refusal to buy multiple copies leads to the players being berated by characters like Hassan for making the trans community look bad. If you buy this game, it is not actually hurting anyone. Yes, they're using the argument that JK is making money off of it. She obviously is. We don't know how much or how little that amount is, but she's making money from this game in some way, shape, or form. But if tomorrow everything Harry Potter was taken off of the market and nobody could buy it anymore and she couldn't make money off of it, it doesn't matter because she would be set for the rest of her freaking life and that's just how it goes. I had said this in another video, but behind every single project, whether it is a TV show, a movie, a video game, there is going to be someone that you deem controversial. Behind every single project, there is going to be someone that you do not like, whether it is a writer, a developer, or a high-up executive at a company that ultimately is making money off of a project. If you stopped supporting content in general because there was someone behind it that you didn't like, you would never be able to consume anything. If you don't want to purchase this game because JK Rowling created the Wizarding World, that is okay. You are allowed to save your money if you want to, but don't guilt other people because they're not following your example and they're not doing exactly what you're doing and it makes you angry. The article goes on to say the game systematically dismantles the idea that trans people and their allies are in some way harming or oppressing gamers who want to play Legacy by pairing the reaction of public figures with the requests that they do not buy or stream a game with a transphobic creator. The purchase simulator shows just how ridiculous this oppressing gamers talking point really is. So as you can see, this is just another terrible article from the Mary Sue. They have been banking off of Hogwarts legacy lately and I just wanted to show this article off because honestly this whole situation is pretty freaking pathetic. But that's all that I really had to discuss in this video. Let everyone know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to give it a like, share it, and subscribe to the channel. And of course, if you didn't, make sure to give it a dislike. I appreciate your support either way, but I will talk to you all again in the next video really soon.